23rd. That is the very thing. There cannot have been a fusilier who did not glow with grim pride when he learnt of the Duke's onerous words. My guay the bechkin lon a gwint I gwaid, and gumisk evor glau. Their cry is on the wind, their blood is in the rain. Fusiliers held their breath as Tom King announced the regiments facing the axe or amalgamation. But as the decision came through that Wales's oldest regiment was to be saved, they just couldn't contain their pride and joy. The following will be unaffected the Devonshire and Dorset Regiment, the Royal Welsh Fusiliers. <laughs> the Fusiliers have put all their fighting tradition into saving their regiment, ever since the rumour that they may have been forced to merge with the Cheshire Regiment. A petition with over 100,000 signatures was collected in just 10 days and handed to government. They're the only regiment in the British Army to wear the black flash and they wear it with honour. 90% of recruitment comes from within Wales and 45% speak Welsh. It's that tradition and belonging that's so vital to the men of Wales. Mr Davis, what do you think your success is attributable to? I think the success is attributable to the very hard work done by the Comrades Association, also by the members of Parliament of all parties, and also by all the local and district councils. The effort has been tremendous, everybody supported us, and I'm delighted with the success. How on earth did you manage to get 100,000 signatures in 10 days? We managed to do that by getting our comrades and our friends on the road outside the barracks, outside on the main high streets of every town and getting signatures. What was the feeling like when that announcement came through? A lump in my throat. I was overcome. <laughs> Delighted. You're quite moved now, aren't you? Do you think it was because of all your hard work? I think so. Not me personally. All of that. It means an awful lot to you. A lot. The best news is sliced bread. It's probably the best news the regiment has had in 300 years. It is definitely. And to us, it's very emotional and, oof, it's going to be a night to night, I can tell you. Derek, you soon burst into song as soon as you heard that announcement. Really, what does it mean in your heart of hearts for it? Well, it, it means so much. You wouldn't have to look at the people's eyes, wasn't it? You saw their eyes. I mean, once they mentioned that they're not amalgamating us, they're not taking our dignity away, that's it. We just burst into song. It's something that I won't forget because uh, it's my wedding anniversary today. And uh, I intended taking my wife out tonight for a celebration. But it'll be a double celebration, I want it, you know, and I'm really going to enjoy it. And I'm sure when I phone her up now in about five minutes time that she'll uh, be coming down the club to meet me and we'll make it a good night and we'll go out for a meal and enjoy ourselves. We work very hard in this club. I'm assistant secretary here, so we've got our neck in it. And also rephrase a little bit with Malcolm said, it's my anniversary today, but I forgot. So uh, I got to face the elements when I go home. But it's a wonderful day for the Royal Welsh. After 302 years of serving the colours, I think it's the ultimate. Kitty, what was your feeling? You burst into tears, didn't you? Yes. <laughs> I was always a moon. I really was. That was all I was hoping for. Mr Barnes, you joined in 1932. It must have been a very proud moment for you today when you realised the regiment was going to be saved. Oh, yes, it was, definitely. We joined the regiment and it turned into a family for us. And we've never 
if they took it out of us, it would be like a bereavement to us. What does it mean? so much to us. What does it mean to Wales? Well, it's a great thing for Wales today, as you'd imagine. They've all volunteered and signed forms all through the, through the principality to help us to keep our regiment. And I'll say this, another great thing what happened today is they've saved the Queen's Lagoon Guards. I had a son served in the Queen in the desert. And I think it's real great. They're the, they're the Welsh cavalry. Yeah, yeah. Welsh men again, and you can't beat them. <laughs> and, the, and the thing is, we've got such a bunch here, no money if you join tomorrow, you'd still be one of us. Obviously, keeping the, the Fusiliers means you keep the flash, keep the buttons. I mean, how important is that? It's very important. Oh, it's very, very, very important, important to us. I mean, a battalion and a regiment wants to keep its identity for obvious reasons. The Cheshire Regiment, as I say, and I, I would like to say this because I was in uh, Chester Cathedral a fortnight ago because I made it my business to go up there, and I was impressed by the, the Cheshire Regiment's battle honours. And if we had to win, amalgamate with anyone, well, I w we would have been proud to uh, have amalgamated with the 22nd of foot, and we are the 23rd of foot. The thing is that it's greatly important to all Welsh people and all Welshmen that we retain our identity as the Royal Welsh Fusiliers. What did, Anine, what did it mean to you to join as a Fusilier? Uh, it meant following a tradition. My father was a Royal Welshman before me and I followed in his footsteps. Do you think it was important that the Fusiliers were kept for youngsters behind you? Definitely. It's, uh, their identity is second to none in the world. Uh, they're, they're, a, they're a great ambassadors throughout the world, wherever they, wherever they serve. Uh, they're a proud regiment, and they're a family regiment and the loss of them would have been devastating to the whole of Wales and the future of Wales. Now, of course, that uh, was the announcement you were waiting for, and it was the right announcement. How did you feel when that came through? Well, I'm still feeling... Sh I'm totally shaking in my shoes, and my hands are shaking, and it, it's, it's unbelievable, and it's wonderful, and it's marvellous, and that's all I can say, really, on that. And are the Fusiliers going to raise the roof of the club tonight? Well, there'll be a lot of taxis booked tonight, yes, and I think, and uh, some people might be late for work in the morning, but I think but that's, that's acceptable in, under these circumstances. In 1989, the Royal Welsh Fusiliers celebrated their tercentenary on the birthday of their Colonel-in-Chief, the Queen. There were double celebrations then, but nothing like the celebrations being held in Swansea tonight. We are the Galloping 23rd. That was on the 23rd of July 1991 and it's now March the 1st 1994 and the Royal Welsh Fusiliers are arriving at Swansea to receive the freedom of the city and together with the comrades from many different branches will make their march of pride.
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Get these arms away quicker. Stand up! Ace! Stand! Easy! And relax your weapons. Good morning, sir. 
There are 14 officers, 384 men, the Royal Welsh Fusiliers, on parade and awaiting your disposal, sir. Thank you very much, Edison. Carry on. Sir. Good morning, sir. A call of drums, band, regimental pioneers, and three guards formed by the 1st and 3rd battalions are formed up in the close order. There are 14 officers and 384 other ranks on parade awaiting your disposal, sir.
for example, a regimental band, together with 15 officers and 300 Navy full of soldiers of the 1st and 3rd Battalion, the Royal Royal Fusiliers, and 125 comrades, the Royal Royal Fusiliers Comrades Association, are at the close order awaiting your inspection, sir.
with our first battalion in Burma. And that is very, very special. I don't know quite when our first association with Swansea started. It's shrouded in the mists of time. But what I do know is that Caesar Davis, who was born in Swansea in 1786, and Daniel Hughes, who was born in Swansea in 1794, served with distinction with the regiment at the Battle of Waterloo, a battle in which not only is our history, our nation's history, founded, but also in which there was a moment of dreadful crisis. Defeat seemed imminent and a gap in the line had to be plugged. When the Royal Welsh was offered, the Duke of Wellington was heard to say, Ah, the 23rd of foot, the very thing. And I think every soldier that day will have been proud, as we are proud today, to be in Swansea. In 1825, the regiment sailed into Swansea in a man of war, no doubt, under full sail and a wonderful sight. They took four days to march to Brecon. It takes about an hour to get there today. In 1858, we had a recruiting campaign in this area, and so great was the response from Swansea that it had to be called to a halt almost at once because the regiment was full. And so our joint histories continue. The history of sacrifice is something which we both share. In many wars, but particularly with 42 battalions in the First World War, and I might say in passing that the whole of the British infantry is only 38 battalions today, the regiment suffered dreadful casualties. And of course, Swansea suffered dreadful casualties in the bombing of the Second World War. But it's a history of joint service <coughs> and sacrifice. Indeed, we have a spiritual link with the city in that one of our former officiating chaplains is the rector of the Collegiate Church of St. Mary's here in the city. And that's a source of pride as well. Most recent of all, we owe something very special to the city. Only three years ago, when the army was to be reduced still further, we had to launch a very fierce campaign for our survival. And the city of Swansea and our wonderful Comrades Association, as with all our branches of the Comrades Association, came very much to our rescue. In that crisis, we stood shoulder to shoulder. And I'm sure now that as we later in the year come to South Wales, the first time a Welsh battalion will have been stationed in Wales since I think the late 20s or early 30s, we will have an opportunity to cement this great association even more firmly. I have no doubt that we will continue together the Royal Welsh to prosper and to serve and the city of Swansea to flourish. So I would end with your motto, my Lord Mayor, Floriat Swansea, let Swansea flourish. And may I to mark this great occasion, present you and your city council with a silver armada dish with the inscription that marks the occasion around the rim and the regimental crest in the centre. Thank you once again for the most tremendous privilege you have bestowed upon us. to exercise their right as free men of the city of Swansea to march through the city with drums beating, bayonets fixed and regimental colours flying at Sir Priest. Provision granted.
flag. Never seen each other for 41 years. Now they're all together at the Royal Welsh Fusiliers Club. The boys from Wrexham. That's it, we are, yeah. The boys from Wrexham. Yeah, right, Thomas 28 was the biggest goat in the first battalion, Royal Welsh Fusiliers. Is that right, boy? Biggest goat. 1946, 1949. Oh, my
Thank <laughs> you. 